Welcome to the AIM Learn Fast eTraining series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training of your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This AIM Sports Learn Fast training module is Basic Configuration and Setup Using Race Studio 3, Part 2. This two part Learn Fast video series covers the basic configuration and setup process of your MXL2 and MXG data loggers using the Race Studio 3 software. Already covered in Part 1 was creating a new configuration plus these tab functions, channels, ECU stream, CAN2 stream, math channels, and parameters. We will now cover shift lights and alarms, display, smarty cam stream, and CAN expansions. We will also cover these icons across the top of the screen. Okay, as we learned in part one of this series, this highlighted tab shows that we are working on the Learn Fast MXL2 configuration. To get started, select the Shift Lights and Alarms tab. When this panel opens, you can easily see that you have your 10 shift lights. They are user definable, and in order to change the values, just click into the Shift Light RPM value box. And in this example, type in 8000 RPM. You can also change the color and flash rates of the LEDs just by clicking on the LED image. We will show how to do that more in a little bit. To open the Options dialog box, select the Shift Light Settings icon. And this opens the Shift Lights dialog box. Let's look at the options that are available to us. The first option is we can choose the sequence mode for the shift lights. The first choice is a LED stays on if its threshold is exceeded. This is the most popular. The second choice is an LED stays on until another LED with higher threshold is turned on. The second option is to choose the engine RPM channel. And the third option is the ability to have gear dependent shift lights. To activate gear dependent shift lights, select the gear dependent shift lights checkbox. The next thing we need to do is define how many gears we have in our race vehicle. So we would click the max gear number up arrow until we show three gears. And here are the three different gear positions and the different RPM values and LED colors that you can now set up. You would also need to choose the gear position sensor. I have not done that here but you will have to. After you clicked on the OK button to close the previous dialog box, you can select the up arrows to move to each gear position and look at the RPM LED light values. After we get our shift lights set up, we can add a new alarm. To add a new alarm, click on the Add New Alarm button. And this opens the new alarm window. For this example, I want to build a low oil pressure alarm and I want this alarm to only trigger when the RPM is greater than 500 RPM and the oil pressure is less than 20 PSI. This way the light will only come on when the oil pressure is low and the engine is running. The first step to building a new alarm is to give it a name. So in this case you will click into the text box and then type in low oil pressure. Now that we have named our alarm we need to create the conditions that will trigger this alarm. To start that process, select the channel selection button. And this opens the select channel window. And in the select channel dialog box, we are given a source of channels and then the channel list beneath each source. In this case, we want to retain RPM, so we will click on the OK button. And then we need to select the list selection button and select the greater than menu item. And to finish this condition, we need to tell it that we want our RPM to be greater than 500 RPM. So we need to select the text box and then type in 500. And now we need to add a second condition for when our oil pressure is lower than 20 PSI. To add this condition, click on the add condition button. And now we have our second condition, but we now have to define it. So in order to define it, we need to select on the channel selection button. And this opens the select channel window. And we have the right source of analog digital channels selected. So the next thing to do is select the oil pressure item. And click on the OK button. 
the less than condition is what we want, so the next thing to do is select the text box and type in 20 PSI. Good. Now to make sure we have our conditions correct, the way you would read this is, if our RPM is greater than 500 and our oil pressure is less than 20, this alarm will be triggered. And the next thing we need to do is tell it what actions. To begin, select the list selection button. And in this case, we want LED warning light number one, so select the LED one item. And next, we need to define what we want that LED to do. To see our options, select the list selection button. In this case, we will select the fast blinking option. And our final option on the action is the color of the LED. To change the color, select the list selection button. As you can see, you have seven choices, but we are going to stick with red and select the red LED color option. Just like with conditions, we can stack actions. To add an action, select the Add Action Selection button. And then select the List Selection button. And here, in addition to the LED, we want to have a message. To do this, select the Message item and then select the text box and type in the message of low oil pressure. The last choice we have on a message action item is the display color when the message comes up. To see our options, select the list selection button. Our choices are to have a normal display color or to have the display turn red when this message appears. In this case, we are going to select the red list item. And to finish the alarm, we need to tell it what to do when the conditions are no longer met. To see our options, click on the list selection button. And as you can see, we have several choices. But in this case, I want to select the condition no longer met item. And to finish the alarm, click on the OK button. And that's the basics of the Shift Lights and Alarms tab. Next, let's select the Display tab. The Display tab is where we configure what the driver will actually see on the display. We can also create multiple pages. But first, let's change the scale of the RPM display. To do this, select the List Selection button. And then select the 8000 list item. The next part of the display we're going to talk about is this user definable area. Right now we are only showing two channels, but we can show one through four. To add an additional channel, select the Add Channel button. So now you can see that we're showing three channels in the user definable area, with the new channel being the number of satellites. Let's change the channel assigned to this area to Oil Pressure. To do this, we need to select the List Selection button. And this opens the Select Channel window. As you can see, we're showing GPS as our source and satellite number as our channel. To change this to Oil Pressure, first we need to select the AD Channel item from the Source list and select Oil Pressure from the Channel list. And then click on the OK button. Your AIM Sports MXL2 and MXG data loggers have the ability to have multiple pages. To add a page, click on the Add New Page button. And now we have two pages. For more settings, select the Settings button. And this opens the Set Page Parameters window. The Page Parameters window allows you to change three things. The page name, the color of the display background, and the button that you use to change pages. Let's change the page name to Warm Up by clicking into the text box and then typing warm up. We will leave the other two choices like they are. To finish this change, click the save button. To change the name of page 2, select the settings button. And this will open the set page parameters window. And again, click into the page name text field and enter race. And then click the save button to save the settings. 
Next, we're going to look at the SmartyCam Stream tab. If you are running a SmartyCam, you need to come in and set up this table. On the left side is the SmartyCam function, and on the right side is the channel that's going to feed that graphic or that function in your SmartyCam videos. The next tab is the Can Expansions tab. To add an AIMSports Can expansion device, click on the New Expansion button. And this opens the Select an Expansion window. To configure an expansion, first select one of the items. And then click on the OK button. As you can see here, you can make all the changes you need to your AIMSports CAN expansion device. And this finishes the main tabs across the top of the page. What we need to make sure we do now is click on the Save button to save the configuration. And then to close the LearnFast MXL2 configuration, click on the Close button. And now let's take a quick look at the icons across the top of the page. Let's start by clicking on the Preferences icon. And this opens the Preferences window. The first tab, Language, allows you to select the language of the software. The next tab is the Unit of Measure. Let's select it. This is where you set your default units and your display precision. Next, let's click on the Download Data tab. The Download Data tab is where you set up the default file name and file structure. Next, we will select the Download Movies tab. Here you can use the same settings as the Download Data tab for your movies, or by unchecking this checkbox, you can set all the file and folder default structure separately. Next, we will select the Download Test Types tab. There are many different test types that will be available to you. Under this tab, you can uncheck the ones you do not want to see. Next, we will select the Forced Download Settings tab. If you are interested in always having the same track name, championship, racer name, test type, vehicle name, and number included in your file names, you can input those here. We're not going to do that, so we're going to click the OK button. Now we're going to click on the Custom Sensors icon. This is the custom sensor function. Custom sensors are needed when you are trying to use a sensor that is not in our standard sensor library. This is where you build new, import, or export custom sensors. I have one built already. Let's double click on it and open it. Let's slide it up so we can see the entire graph. As you can see, custom sensors are actually pretty simple. Once you know the millivolt output of the sensor and the value you want to assign to it, all you need to do is plug in the numbers. An example here is at 500 millivolts, there is one gallon in the tank. At the next data point, at 1000 millivolts, there is 2.5 gallons in the tank, and so on. Once you plug in all the numbers, you just save the sensor. There will be a more detailed LearnFast video coming soon. Next, we will click on the Configurations icon. And this is the Configuration area. We have spent a lot of time here, so we will move on to the Tracks function. This brings up the GPS Manager software. We already have built a three-part LearnFast video series on the GPS Manager software. View those videos if you need more information. We will close this software by clicking on the Close button. And next is the Analysis icon. We are going to skip that icon as we have over 25 LearnFast videos about that subject. Next we will click on the Movies icon. And this is the Movies function. This is where you will manage all your SmartyCam movies. Look for a LearnFast video dedicated to this page soon. Next we will click on the Devices icon. On the Devices page, you can see that there are three tabs. Right now, we are on the Live Measures tab. On the Live Measures tab, you will see all of the sensors that are connected to your MXL2 or MXG in real time. In this example, I do have an MXL2 connected and showing Live Measures. Also on this page, you can Auto Calibrate, Start Recording, and also see the millivolt values. Next, we click on the Download tab. 
on the download tab you'll see three choices. You can download, delete, or unhide already downloaded data on your MXL2 or MXG device. Since there is no data on the data logger, these buttons here are grayed out. Next we will select the Firmware and User Info tab. Under the Firmware and User Info tab, there are input fields that the user can fill in and then transmit to the data logger. Down lower is specific information about the connected data logger. And in the lowest part of the screen, if the firmware is not current, a message will appear and give you the opportunity to upgrade the firmware. Now let's click on the configuration icon. And now we have two more icons in the upper right hand corner. Let's first click on the web updates icon. This will open the web updates window. If your computer is connected to the internet, the software will check and see if your software is up to date. If it is not, it will download the latest version and update it automatically. In this case, the software is up to date and we will click on the exit button. And finally, the last icon in the upper right hand corner is a link directly to the AIM Italian website. And this ends the basic configuration and setup using Ray Studio 3 Part 2 Learn Fast video. For more AIM Sports Learn Fast e-training content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support. Your source for support and training of AIM Sports products when and where you want it.